my son recently said to me, Dad, your videos are awesome, but they're incredibly boring. So I decided to have more fun with this one, focusing on one of the early Matchbox kits. I'm a big fan of modeling nostalgia. I love the old kits. I uh, built them a lot as a youngster. And they were a great inspiration to me at that age, a young age. <coughs> Drawing, painting, sketching these models gave me a huge head start in my career and sort of fed my passion as it were. Um, here we got the, I think it's a 1973 release, the Matchbox Nat, 70 second scale. I got this kit from a good friend and client of mine, however the kit didn't come with a canopy. Um, but I managed to mold my own one, uh, just using plastic, uh, wooden plug and a heat gun. First attempt wasn't so great, it was a bit hazy and a bit milky. But the next attempt turned out great, so I was glad to get to the next stage of the kit. And at this stage, I thought it would be a good idea just to do some basic sketching. Okay, so I've got the three views at the top of the screen that I want to sketch, starting with the one top left. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a 3D effect using 2D lines. So it's important at this early stage to do visual measuring. In other words, find out where your horizontal and vertical lines are. Your middle point between the left hand to the right hand side of your subject. Because as you build up the lines of the subject that you're drawing, in this case the net, um, it's in a way similar to actually constructing the kit. You are adding layers, you're adding pieces, putting the parts together. After I'm done putting in the tail, I'm going to add the canopy. And this is where the visual magic happens. Um, the minute I add the canopy line, the basic canopy outline, uh, the sketch loses its 2D quality and becomes a three-dimensional drawing. For the most part, this is a fun demonstration, but this is also exactly how I approach my formal works. Uh, the drawing phase is so important and technical accuracy is vital. Obviously, little mistakes do creep in, which I have opportunity to fix at a later stage. But having a successful finished work all starts with having success at the drawing stage. So this is vital. This is really important. But it's also fun. And of course, it's important to be able to create a 3D effect with a pencil before even using paint. That is why I encourage the beginners out there just to have fun. Have fun with a pencil. It's a great tool. It's lovely to sketch, create basic 3D effects. It helps you to relax, just to just to refine your skills. Uh, helps you to observe. Allows you to make mistakes. Uh, forget the loose lines everywhere. That doesn't matter. Um, have fun. Draw again. Practice, practice, practice. Um, this is so great. And uh, often when one starts straight away with using paint from the beginning, it can be a bit stressful, it can be a bit intimidating, one is scared of making mistakes, but the pencil, the pencil is your friend. You can go wild with a pencil, it's great, you can relax, you can have fun, you can just go for it. While I've been waffling on about the pencil, I've already started the next drawing, which is a rear port view of the fuselage and essentially identify the basic shape fits into a triangle. Obviously starting at the jet pipe, bottom right, up to the fin and rudder, top right, and across to the left to the nose. Once this drawing is finished, I'll show you a breakdown of images in 10 steps from the start, the basic triangle, to the finished drawing. Here we have a visual summary of the 10 steps, starting with the triangle, working through the different stages, and then lastly and finally, both views of the model and the two drawings. The drawings are small, they're pretty rough, I did them fairly quickly, they're not 100% accurate, but it's a good way to start, and the more time you spend doing little sketches like these, the better understanding you'll have of your subject, uh, purely through 
case of making mistakes, making errors, finding out what not to do. And uh, that only comes with actually doing it. When I was about 17 or 18 years old, I developed a passionate obsession for the Spitfire and I decided I'm going to build a model of the Spitfire. But I didn't want a plastic kit, I wanted to scratch build something. So I tackled the, the project uh, using mainly balsa plastics and a few metals here and there. Uh, it was I think roughly 15th scale, maybe slightly smaller. And it took a year to build. Uh, you know, before I started that, I thought I had a fairly good knowledge of the aircraft, uh, but I knew very little. And uh, once I'd finished that, I said to a good friend of mine, I said, if you want to get to know your aircraft or know your subject and build a model of it, uh, you get a much better three-dimensional understanding of what goes into the construction, the design, especially with an aircraft like the Spitfire, where even the curves have curves. Obviously, one can't have a model of everything. If your subject is a bowl of flowers or a landscape, that's a different story. But when it comes to a mechanical subject, if one does have the aid of a model, it's a huge advantage. For me, there's nothing quite like having a three-dimensional model in my hand just to inspire and set me off in a direction. the greatest fun for me was simply building an old matchbox kit again. Uh, real modeling nostalgia for me as I did as a youngster. And I think matchbox should be applauded for their contribution to the hobby. Those of us out there that also do modeling will appreciate this. Uh, a lot of us grew up with these kits as youngsters and uh, they had a fantastic range. A lot of modeling subjects, whether it be the military vehicles, especially the aircraft that I remember, some of which have never been remolded by other manufacturers today and are fairly sought after and hard to come by. The Nat is a very small aircraft in this scale, but I had loads of fun. I thoroughly enjoyed the build. I kept it simple, um, no primer, no airbrush. The decals went on surprisingly well, given the age of the kit. A bit out of scale here and there, but otherwise no problems. Had a great time. Okay, so now for the final drawing and painting. I did my sketching with a soft pencil, I think it was a 2B, and then went over the lines I wanted to keep with a 4H, which leaves me with a sharp, fine line to work with, rubbed out the unwanted lines, and I was ready to paint.
As this is a small painting, I kept the technique rather quick, loose and spontaneous, but I had lots of fun and uh, thoroughly enjoyed the model build and the painting and the sketching and putting this video together. So guys, I'd like to hear from you. Uh, if this has been of interest to you, would you like to see more model themed art tutorials? Um, if so, please let me know. Please like, subscribe and uh, until next time, thank you very much.